Hey y'all, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial on creating a GitHub Pages site with Jekyll. Um, there's a great write-up here on the GitHub Docs that walks through the entire process. Um, the end product you'll see uh, comes out to something like this. I found this person's blog by just typing in uh, GitHub Pages with Jekyll blog. And Simon Dosta is using this uh, just as intended, just blog posts listed out by date. Um, you can click in here. It all uses Markdown as the basis um, of the content. So it has stuff like syntax highlighting and formatting. So that's all super nice. You can also create different uh, pages. So you can link to projects on your GitHub. Um, so here he has each link to projects that he works on on his GitHub. Um, and the best part about this is it's all free. Um, so let's get into creating the site. So I'll talk a little bit about what Jekyll is up front. Jekyll's a static site generator. And that just takes Markdown and HTML and creates a complete static site with the content uh, that you've created. So you can specify designs and layouts um, of templates on your own and tweak the site's look and feel, URLs and different data displayed on the page. Like I was saying before, um, you'll need to have Ruby installed, Jekyll, Git, and VS Code. I'm not going to walk through that here but I'm gonna walk through the setup and deployment of the source code out to your GitHub and then how to link in your GitHub to the URL for your blog. So let's get started. So first, what you're gonna to wanna to do is come to your GitHub and create a new repository. The convention is to name your repository uh, something like user.github.io or if you're an organization it'll be the organization.github.io um, I'm going to do my username so bit by bits .github.io you can add an optional description here I'm going to keep mine public and then I'm going to create the repository cool so Next, I'm going to create my site locally and then push that out to my GitHub um, to reference there. So if you open your terminal, um, you're going to create a directory that you want to put your source code into. So I'm going to create a directory just called bit by bit blog. Just go back, type the right thing. change your directory into there. And then I'm going to initialize a git. And there's an option to change your publishing source. I'm going to keep the default settings up now, but there's some uh, more specific setups that you can do around uh, managing a custom domain uh, for your GitHub pages. So instead of saying kind of like your username.github.io, you can have a custom domain that points to that. But for now, let's just keep everything uh, simple. So then you're going to use Jekyll to generate uh, the base code for your site. So this is just going to create all the source code in my bit by bit dash blog directory. So if I list out, I can see that it generated stuff and I'm going to open up VS Code. So you can see that it generated a bunch of files. Um, I'll go over some of this stuff later, but this is one of the main posts that it comes with, it's just a template. But we are gonna wanna come into the gem file and comment out the gem 
Jekyll line here. Another one that we're going to want to add is this one already exists, um, but we're going to modify it just a little bit um, to reference a specific version. So I'm just going to copy a little bit of code that I had there. Essentially the same line, but you're specifying the specific GitHub pages version. As of now, I think the latest reference was 223. So I'm going to save that. And then I am going to run bundle install. Looks like everything ran okay there. Um, so I'm going to go over running it on your local host. So to do a local host test, you're going to run bundle exec Jekyll serve. And I think this is going to throw an error for me. And I think it might be helpful to step through. So I already previously found what was going on here. It looks like there's a web brick dependency issue um, with Jekyll and Ruby 3.0. So we're gonna just have to, we're gonna add that in. So I'll do bundle add Webrick. You'll see to my gem file, it's gonna add Webrick right here. And then I'm gonna run the bundle exec Jekyll serve one more time. Cool. So now it shows me the server address. So it looks like it's running on my local host on um, 4000. And you have a local host version of the blog. So I'm going to kill that off for now. And then we'll get to the main bits of publishing this out to your GitHub. So now that we've gotten the initial setup in place, I'm going to add the existing files to my Git. And then I'm going to do an initial commit. So initial GitHub pages site with Jekyll. Cool. So then what I'm going to want to do is reference my remote origin. So we will do git remote add origin and then specify the URL here. Cool. And then git branch dash m main and then I will push this out. All right, so it looks like it created the main branch and then push that out to my GitHub. All right, so then in your repository that you've created on GitHub, you're going to come to your settings and then navigate down to the code and automation to pages. And you'll see that your GitHub pages site is currently being built from the main branch. You can specify another branch if you wanted to here, but I'm going to keep the default. And then it gives you this URL here. So bit by bits.github.io. So it might take a few seconds just to load that up. And there it is. You have successfully published a GitHub pages blog using Jekyll and Markdown with the default pages. So the really cool thing is that this is all supported via Markdown. Um, so you can come in here and just alter any of the content that you want. Um, and then all you have to do is push your changes out to Git, and then it'll be reflected here. Um, so you can see in this specific post, 
this is the content here. Um, you'll find this post on your underscore post directory. Go ahead and edit and rebuild the site. Um, it has support for uh, syntax highlighting via Ruby, and this is all Markdown. So um, all of this is just super cool. It's awesome that it's free, um, and you can use it to publish whatever you're interested in. So that is the end of the tutorial here. Um, if you want to make any changes, again, we can change this file and push that out. But thanks for listening and hope you like the video.